Hello, and welcome to the What Inspires You podcast. My name is Paul. And I'm Brandon. Uh, join us as we rediscover wonder through inspiring conversation. Let's go. This is everybody. It. Season this two. Is season dose. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So kind of our idea behind this was to, um, we've done a lot of diff- just different episodes. We've had some different uh, quality control throughout all of it. Uh, started out without video and just mm-hmm. did audio. So we've kind of reached a form where we feel like we could do this going forward for quite a while, mm-hmm. just kind of upgrading some of the quality, but keeping the basic structure the same and yeah. whatnot. Yeah, same people. Same. <laughs> yeah. The basics. It's not going to be new, new faces next week. Yeah, that's right. Unless we get a guest. I haven't been fired yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're locking the format in for the foreseeable future. Mm-hmm. We're going to try to... Uh, basically post some stuff around uh, apple spotify mm-hmm. and then uh just keep uploading to youtube obviously so that's right yeah yep yep going to the big leagues people yeah remember us all you who were watching us back when we didn't even have a a video our og <laughs> people yeah one of our three views that's right <laughs> mom yeah i mean to be fair and one of them was me <laughs> but to be fair i wouldn't even want to listen to it because it's super like scratchy and there's like sniffing and sneezing and i'm still wheezing. gonna do some sniffing and sneezing yeah okay that's fine but i actually edit now so oh, that's oops, the difference oh, okay no he'll cut it out nope, no more sniffing and sneezing <laughs> not anymore yeah um so yeah um i think just to kick it off i had this idea that i would just start with uh basically just revisiting topic one for me mm. Uh, the first topic I ever circle the first thing that ever inspired me in my life (laughs) one one year ago (laughs) first inspirational thought you ever had yep (laughs) the thing that we started this podcast yeah yeah the the thought was to start a podcast that's right and then the second thought though was competition oh yes and so I was gonna uh, I don't know I was gonna record it and then go back and like just kind of uh, compare notes and Mm. see how evolved in a year Mm. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, I mean, comp- competitions are still very inspiring to me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny cause just, just like, I noticed that each thing I do in life is kind of has like a little undercurrent of competition to mm-hmm. it. And so like the things that kind of capture my attention most always have a little bit of competition mm-hmm. and I don't know why that is still, <laughs> I haven't figured it out after a year, mm-hmm. but there is like some idea of. I think I've, I've, I'm closer to figuring it out, I would say. Okay. And I think to me, one of the big things about it is that I think competition really just brings out the best in people. Okay. Um, you know, what basically is, yeah, it's like a, it's like a little fire, you know, under your butt mm-hmm. to kind of like, like, cause it stings to lose, right? Mm-hmm. A little bit. And so <laughs> if you have that motivation of a little bit of loss or a little bit of pain, mm-hmm. it really just kind of forces everybody to like operate at their best if mm-hmm. they're competitive. Mm-hmm there's nothing worse than now it. Yeah. when you say it brings out the best in people like i'm thinking of competitive people who have some really bad attitudes so do you mean <laughs> best in terms of like their personality yeah like their performance okay yeah yeah, 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 yeah. like if i play <laughs> soccer and i'm competing i will it will make me the best soccer player to do yeah. it competitively than to be all casual about it yeah but i'll probably have kind of a sour attitude if i do it competitively whereas if i do it casually Maybe I'll be a little bit more chill. Potentially, yeah. yeah. I mean, th- thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. Yeah, the best performance-wise. Okay, all right. <laughs> and I guess, like, the ultimate dream, right, is to be able to have that blend of being, like, very competitive mm. and very sportsmanlike. Mm-hmm. You know, because I think that that's the ultimate level that can be achieved. And for me, when I see competitive people that are very sportsmanlike, like, those people are just like a tear up in my book, mm. you know, just above like a lot of people. Cause it's, I know how difficult it is to be a sportsman like, mm. <laughs> um, and that's something I've always kind of struggled with. So yeah, for me, like when I see that it can be done mm. and people that really embody that spirit of sportsmanship, but while still like never backing down or never like not giving it at their all, mm. like those people are just miles and above, just like my, my heroes, my mm. inspiration. Yeah. And have you ever had any specific moments of playing a sport and maybe somebody won, but they were really generous about it or they lost, but they were encouraging or any like moments you can specifically think of? Yeah. Yeah. I've had a, a few. I mean, I even just recently, like uh, playing volleyball 
there's like a couple of people that are just like so good mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're just like, you know, at the same time, they're, you know, allowing you to get on the court with them. Mm. They're not uh, like kind of gatekeeping anything. Oh yeah, They're playing their best, you know, hundred percent, hundred and ten percent. And it doesn't really matter what you do. You know, it's like you, if you mess up, it's like no big deal. You know, mm. it's like, it doesn't affect their game or their position in like that sport. Yeah. And so like, they're just there to like play hard. Yeah. And so that's like, for me, that's what I'm aspiring to right now is mm. just to be like, you know, and I, it applies to obviously broader life. It's like, you can't control what people do, mm. but you can control what you do. Mm. And so it's like, you can bring that fire, fire to the game or to life and then, you know, have a lot of grace for other people. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah. What about you? Are you a pretty competitive person? I think that when I was younger and I was playing soccer, I definitely got really competitive because mm -hmm. um, I remember I was playing at like AYSO and then I went into the All-Stars and I definitely remember getting into that All-Star phase, mm -hmm. the pinnacle of my soccer career <laughs> at age 12. I don't know how old, maybe yeah. 13, whatever. And uh, I definitely remember thinking really seriously about games and if the ref called something, I was angry about it. And if I didn't mm -hmm. feel like I played my best, I was like grumpy for the rest of the day. And I, I definitely remember that like, or that angst when it came to the game. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I remember actually feeling like, um, cause I think, yeah, about the age of 13 was when I felt like I was really being serious in terms of like church and wanting to follow the Lord and reading my Bible and praying. And I remember around that time, you got thinking, into competitive Christianity. I got, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. I can worship more than you. Yeah. I've got more prophecies than you. No, um, <laughs> I probably had some competitiveness. I did actually have some competitiveness <laughs> when it came to um, quoting the Bible, oh, Bi Bible okay. quoting. <laughs> you know, if you played like Bible trivia. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know. All I, the obscurest facts and I, names. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, no, aside from that, yeah, there was a moment where I thought, uh, I'm, I'm letting this consume me, and it's like bringing out mm -hmm. a lot of anger in me, and I'm not controlling my like passion of soccer very well mm. and i felt convicted and kind of guilty about that you know so then i didn't i decided i didn't want to play soccer as much anymore so i really cut yeah. back on my soccer life interesting you know so here's a question do you think it's like so when you kind of find something in life that like brings up negative things do you feel like it's best to like avoid that activity or do you think it's like an opportunity to like tackle something that's been brought up? No, I think, it, I think it was an opportunity to tackle something, but I think that at my age of, you know, 13, 14, whatever, I don't think I had the maturity to see that. Maybe if I had had somebody guiding me and being like, Hey, you're really good at soccer, but you know, you get upset when you lose and you're kind of, you know, arrogant about it, you know, let me <laughs> uh, help shape that in you. Yeah then, yeah. then I think it could have been a really great thing for me. You know, I mean, I think about how years later I came back to like volleyball and I played, you know, uh, city league on the beach for five years. Yeah. And that was competitive. You know, it's like I wanted to win, mm -hmm. but there were plenty of days when I lost, when we didn't make it to the championship, when, you know, I played a bad game. Yeah. And even though I'd be bummed, I would easily be able to still shake hands and good game everybody and go home from it and not be like upset for the next day or whatever, you know? Yeah. So I think that when I got older, I had the maturity to let go of, of some of that, like, yeah. emotional immaturity around competitiveness yeah when teen teenagers you're probably just looking for like a an outlet most of the time anyway yeah. for a lot of bent-up feelings yeah and so it's just like ah sports that seems like a decently appropriate place to like yeah. let loose you know yeah. kick my anger away <laughs> die soccer ball <laughs> As I, as I was telling you guys, you and Ryan the other day, it's like all I play is the smashing sports. <laughs> it's like you got to just like smash something super uh, hard. It's like volleyball, tennis. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to, what, what's a sport where that like would not have any anger associated with it? I don't know. Like bowling. Croquet, or maybe. Croquet. I don't yeah. know. Uh, badminton. It's like what's a, what's a sport where there's no like aggressive anger moves or anything? <laughs> I don't know if there are any sports like that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, basketball is pretty aggressive. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's always some like <laughs> checkers. Intense, yeah, checkers. Yeah, you know. <laughs> hopscotch. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, well, that's I think for one thing that's interesting to me is how you channel. So it's like that competitiveness gets channeled almost. I think the toxic way to channel it is through like just needing to win, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you have this goal of winning, and if you don't 
hit that mark, then you're angry or you're whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like that, that goal or mark is always going to leave you short essentially, you know, whereas it's, if it's versus, you know, you're almost competing against yourself in some regard, you know, and like, if you have like a group of people all competing against themselves to be the best that they can be, Mm. then not only are you again, bringing out the best in each other because you're like giving it your all, you know, playing each other, but then your goal is just to always improve, you know, or like play, play your best. And so it's like, if you can refocus to that, then all of a sudden, I think you can be pretty proud of yourself win or lose. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been a big thing for me is just, you know, being like, did I improve or, or whatever the goal is, you know, it's like you could even set a goal to just like not be upset or something, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, did I do that? And it's like, okay, then I walked away winning, you know, or I guess not winning, but you know, I walked away successful. Mm Mm-hmm. So. It it is interesting, like when you think about a lot of um, high level sports. You know, I'm thinking about the pro levels of golf or getting into the Olympics. You know, a lot of these higher level sports, almost everybody is at about the same level of talent and proficiency. Like the yeah. top five people are like, <laughs> it's like anyone's game. You know, mm-hmm. um, very rarely do you have like one person who's just like totally ahead. You know, sometimes yeah. that happens, but a lot of times sometimes it can be Usain pretty Bolt neck and comes neck. on the scene. Yeah, sometimes he does, and <laughs> Michael Phelps or whoever. But yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, oftentimes at that high level, people are pretty similar in terms of their skill. But I think what really leads somebody into winning is if they can stay calm and focused it's mm-hmm. that like the psychic or the or the uh, the psychology you know the the mental game yeah you know when you're up there like i'm just thinking about gymnastics if i'm like up there on the balance beam and i know i'm on international tv for yeah. the the gold medal it's like oh i suddenly became nervous <laughs> you know? yeah and, and it's like if doesn't, i can stay doesn't matter how good you are at home doesn't matter that i was great in my basement yeah like i am on stage right now you know mm-hmm. um because i i mean i've thought about that before with events that i've done where you know i'll play a great game of volleyball mm-hmm. and then as soon as it's like the tournament and there's a little crowd around watching <laughs> it's like oh man i am really nervous yeah and i'm getting distracted oh man i'm kind of like overthinking it right now oh dang it like i just i lost my flow you know (laughs) i lost that like casual ease you know yeah so i think a lot of good sportsmanship uh will actually lend itself to the competency of the game Mm. because if you are a good sportsman you i feel like you don't get as nervous or like razzled by uh by the the, com- the competitiveness of the game you know that's very true yeah yeah because it's just like one more element that can make you lose focus yeah at that point if you don't have it in, in check yeah interesting yeah i know it's like the public the whole public idea of like competition too it's like pretty interesting where it's mm-hmm. like i was listening to something about sports today you know and it's like people are equating it to like a religious experience you know mm-hmm. it's like how many times you know it's like this this the event or series of events you know like that's bigger than yourself that you participate in Mm. you know to and like makes you part of something bigger you know yeah and it's like you you cheer for your team you know and you want to be like you know in the in group and all this kind of stuff Mm -hmm. you have like you know fanaticism and all all these different things but yeah especially when there's like teams there's like a cult behind your team it's like (laughs) go cowboys or whatever it is you know yeah yeah and and then if you mess up it's not just like your embarrassment it's like you let down your team yeah down all your fans let down your little like cult tribe that like loves your team (laughs) right they might they might riot and destroy a city that's right yeah they might (laughs) go break stuff yeah yeah Yeah, it's a lot of pressure man i don't know yeah so i just like i want i do wonder this is just a, like a weird thought I always have. I wonder like how many of these athletes are like psychopaths versus like, you know, or, or like maybe like sociopaths. They just, don't, they just don't care what anyone thinks about them. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like maybe, maybe that helps you like, you know, succeed in that field or it's like the pressure just doesn't really get to them because they're just like, I don't give a crap. Yeah. <laughs> so. People are like, wow, they're so stoic and focused. And it's like, no, I'm actually just a sociopath. <laughs> yeah. <I> just, <laughs> I, just, like, I just genuinely don't care. <laughs> just deficient neurons yeah. in some area. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. well i think about that like with alex honnold too you know it's like he's i, I think Who's he's that guy is that the, the rock climber guy the free solo yeah, guy yeah yeah, yeah. you know okay. and it's like 
to get his adrenaline level even like a little bit up, he has to go like, you know, climb a rock face with no ropes. Right. And he's like, yeah, I feel kind of nervous then. You're like, just yeah. kind of nervous. Yeah. Like, <laughs> don't lose focus. Don't right? freeze up. Yeah. You know? And it's like, if you're, ever, I don't know if you've ever been like in an uncontrollably nervous situation where your like legs start shaking or whatever, yeah. you know? It's like for most people, I think they would just like literally shake off the side of the rock, you know, yeah, right. <laughs> from like fear. Yeah. And so that's like a normal body response, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but for whatever yeah. reason, it's like for him, he probably has a higher stress tolerance or something. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he's just done it so many times. He's focused. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe don't that know too. Yeah. Is, yeah. 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 It's interesting when you compare public event sports to something like public speaking. Like so many people do not want to do public speaking. Mm -hmm. And then when you think about playing sports, I mean, I think about when I was young and I was playing soccer, I would spend a lot of time, you know, I mean, when I was really dear fans. Yeah. No, no, (laughs) I couldn't figure out where my fans were in the crowd, but you know, you play these little soccer games and you're like eight years old or whatever. And I remember that the ball would come to me. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I knew how to do is just to kick it really fast because trying to handle it or kick, you know, walk or you know dribble around or whatever with it mm-hmm. i would just get nervous and i'd like trip up over the ball or it'd get mm. taken from me and like i could do pretty good during practice but as soon as it was a game i would be nervous mm. and it's like okay in a game there's like a hundred people around there's like all the parents of both teams and some family and some siblings and random people and my parents didn't love me if i get the ball I, stolen from me i know and it was like i would just get nervous so I'd always want to play on defense when I was young mm-hmm. so that all I had to do was basically just kick it out of the, the person. It's <laughs> like I didn't have to go try to like race it up the line and kick it in the goal. Yeah. And I don't. it wasn't until I was older that I stopped became, uh, be- being as nervous with that. Mm. And then I had the confidence to play the forward positions mm. and like weave around people and try to score. Yeah. You know. You have to like overcome a lot of mental hurdles to be, yeah. Yeah. Like at your peak competitive form, that's for sure. Yeah. Huh interesting yeah yeah it's uh i always think about it in terms of like work too you know where it's like i mean there are competitive jobs out there you know and i always mm-hmm. wonder like if i would thrive in that kind of work environment or something oh, maybe it's like get into sales man maybe yeah yeah maybe use cars <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't know yeah but like yeah i feel like the only competitive experiences i had like with work were always like they're kind of like, I don't know, maybe it's toxic, my word today. <laughs> toxic? <laughs> it's just like, it's always like, oh, who can sell like the most Starbucks gift cards or whatever? And it's oh, like something yeah. super lame, you know? Yeah. Where it's like, and the stakes are pretty low and it's like not right. something you really believe in anyway. I don't know why I believe in volleyball more than selling Starbucks <laughs> gift cards, but like, for whatever reason that does Well, but you're not, I mean, are you selling anything in volleyball? You know, like if you're, yeah. if you're selling gift cards, it's like, I'm working hard for the man you know i'm working hard for like the company yeah you know but if you're playing volleyball then it's like i'm doing this for me to be like a good player like my team can win you know yeah yeah but like i don't know at the at the end of the day they're kind of value i mean what's the difference in value one's just hitting balls really hard and the other one's like pushing pieces of plastic to somebody i don't know (laughs) but yeah it's another interesting topic we can get into at some Mm. point in sports but Mm. and why it matters Mm. Cause I, I always do the, the calculate. I have like this weird calculation that always goes on in my head of like, mm. how many hours every day does humanity spend playing with balls? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like it's got to be an astronomical. Inflated ones or biological ones? <laughs> Inflated. <laughs> Inflated. Yeah, probably you, a lot. You know, it's got to yeah. be like on the orders of like thousands of years of like yeah. human existence. Every day goes to like just kicking, throwing hitting balls around yeah, it's true <laughs> and so yeah just like i don't know <laughs> i know where my head goes <laughs> yeah man maybe not thousands yeah well, I, mean, maybe thousands I, years, I, I don't know i think so dude especially when you i mean one you just think of like every school yeah has like recess mm-hmm. and official sports that they'll play in like high school and whatnot yeah and colleges it's true and aside from that you've got all the little kids at home little five-year-olds who are like throwing their little balls around around, or whatever you know and then the adults and the professional sports and yeah yeah, i mean i i think there is easily thousands and thousands of hours every day that's just spent i was saying thousands of years but i i would say thousands in a day man thousands of year thousands thousands of of hours 
in a day. Oh, thousands of hours for yeah. sure. Oh, you were saying I was thousands? saying thousands of years in a day. Oh, thousands of years in a day? But probably hundreds of years. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know how many years in a day. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go with hundreds. I'm gonna, I'd, have, I'd have to do some math on that. I'm, I'm going to re- amend my statement to hundreds of years yeah? okay, in right. a day right. that humans spend. Because <laughs> you think about like like with YouTube, they do like the statistics statistics of that where it's like 10 years of video are uploaded every single day or whatever you know wow, that's insane yeah wow so <laughs> it's no. all those videos that are like 10 hours of the replay of this like cat meowing <laughs> that's what it is man yeah that's, it's all that stuff <laughs> it's not original and, content and, you know, every sunday you're gonna have like a million little Church churches podcasts. <laughs> podcasting their sermons so there's like an hour yeah you know. <laughs> totally yeah, no, it's yeah, it's it's a lot, but yeah, it's just mm. funny like how many human hours go to these random things, you know. Mm. It's like I don't know, maybe there's a sim- symbolism to balls or something. I don't know. I don't know, but people, yeah. humanity sure likes them. No. <laughs> I don't know how this derailed from competitiveness. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it back right now. Thank um, you. <laughs> what do you think the world would be like if we had higher levels of competition? Like, let's right. say that every human being just whether they wanted to, maybe they're compelled, whatever it is, they are involved in a competitive sport. Mm. Well, it, like it's not professional, but it's just competitive. Like there is a tournament and you are trying to win the tournament of whatever the sport is. And everybody has to like play mm. a sport or maybe they all want to or whatever. Sure. Like how do you think that would change society? Aside from everybody just being more fit. <laughs> that would help. It's interesting because, like, if you just took everybody right now and put them in a competitive environment, I think a lot of people wouldn't even change. Really? Like, yeah. I mean, maybe after like ten years or mm, something like that. Okay. But some people, like, you just put them in a competitive environment; they don't do anything. Hmm. They just like still are casual. Like me playing pickleball yesterday. <laughs> maybe yeah. I wasn't trying that hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't oh. like instantly light the fire under you, you know. No. Unless there's like some stakes or something. Yeah. And so maybe if you had to like, mm. there's like money on the line or something mm. or, or whatever, that'd be kind of interesting. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's like poker, you know, mm-hmm. you can't play poker without money. Yeah. You know, nobody cares. <laughs> yeah. You're just going to be like, all in. Oh, I lost nothing. Okay. Who cares? <laughs> you know, it's like, you got to have some, give some me more moolah. chips. Yeah. 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 So I think, yeah, if there's something on the line. Cause I think for competitive people, like losing is what's on the line. Yeah. You know, like that's the (laughs) The shame or, or winning, you know, the glory of winning, I guess. Yeah. Whatever glory there is at a parks and rec league. (laughs) Spokane. (laughs) I'm better than you. I'm better than all 10 of you. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) All the glory. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I'm the best in the, this one specific County in upper East (laughs) Washington and Spokane. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, to, to some people, I mean, that's the reward, you know, like mm. that's the incentive, but for people that don't have that as an incentive, like just being in a competitive, like the event itself doesn't define competitiveness. It's almost like you bring the competitiveness mm. to the event. Okay. If that makes sense. I don't know. I mean, I, it's like how some people make like Mario party competitive. <laughs> <laughs> I well, I, I I think I've played Mario Party with you one time. I don't really remember too much, but I I think that um, there's two ways to view it. It's I, I I'm seeing a chicken or the egg scenario here. It's mm-hmm. like either the game becomes competitive because the players bring competition to it, their like passion of winning, or maybe they didn't have any competitive side to them but once they started playing they got invested and were like now i really want to win and then the game sort of created a competitiveness inside of them and i i say that feeling like i've had both experiences i've Mm -hmm. definitely come to a game before where i was like i can win this and i will win this and i'm like really competitive (laughs) doesn't matter what it is doesn't matter what it was Uno. (laughs) yeah and then there's been other times where I started playing a game and in the beginning it was like, I don't care, no yeah. emotional stakes. And by the end it was like, oh man, it's either like <laughs> me or them. And like, man, I really want to win this right now. Gosh, I, man, I didn't care at the beginning, but now I do, you know? So what was the stakes that got introduced to like, to like change that? Cause the game didn't change. I think this, I think that when I, I think that when I, cared about winning from the beginning 
Mm-hmm. It was, um, it was because I had already played that type of game before, mm-hmm. and I felt like I had a personal standard that mm-hmm. I needed to uphold. Like mm-hmm. I am really good at foosball. <laughs> So I will not be okay with me losing. That's actually something I am very competitive about, actually. I would say it's one of my more competitive. Can, can confirm that. Yeah, it's like if I play foosball, it's like I do not accept losing right now. Like I must win. Yeah. And if I were to lose, it's like personal failure. Like I let that person, like I could have done better. There's no way. That shame. They, they truly, yeah, shame on me, you know? But if there was a brand new sport that I'd never played before, and I walked into it, I feel like I would only become more competitive with it if I was starting to do well and felt Mm. capable of winning and then like believed in myself enough to think that like, I am good at this. Mm. So it's like competition is bred from competency in your mind. Yeah, I would agree, yeah. And I, and Hmm. I think it's also kind of that personal expectation. Yeah. You know? And I would say it does help throw a little gasoline on the competitive fire <laughs> if there's some kind of reward or there's like an audience watching. Yeah. And it's like, ooh, I really want to impress these people or I, I want to win the, the Starbucks gift card or whatever the thing is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I guess that shows my unreasonably high expectations then because like I literally feel that like in anything I do, even yeah. if I started for the first time. Oh, yeah. Like I have to beat these people. It's like they might have been playing for like five years. <laughs> but I'm just like, I'm gonna beat them. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna I don't know why. I just like it's like I'm just gonna do it. I just I, yeah. I don't know. This is like what I need to do for myself. And like I don't know. I just have like such unrealistically high expectations for myself. It's I, <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, I like I remember back when I was in youth group in high school, and any time there was a youth group game, mm. I felt really like nervous and intense that I wanted to win because you're in high school and you're insecure about yourself and you want to impress the whole crowd of all your peers, and so it always feel like really intense that you want to win, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I actually, this is really weird, <laughs> but whenever I play like a video game online, mm-hmm. like starcraft or something like that that's like a very like strategic mastermind kind of game or something yeah i always feel like really nervous Mm. because i'm playing this unknown person and i feel like (laughs) i'm gonna make an obviously strategic mistake (laughs) and that person's gonna like type into the chat and be like you noob and then i'm gonna be like (laughs) no "No, i'm crushed for the rest of the day like i was a noob i should have known that and then i like feel like i suck you know i knew better than to and try like, the random person online like critiqued me in like a very minor way and i feel like my soul is broken i have to play again to redeem myself you know it's like there's just some weird i don't know, I don't know what it is i feel like that's part of what hooks people yeah to playing games online is that yeah. like need to prove yourself against like the random unknown audience of other players i don't know yeah I don't know. It's a weird thing. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I think there is something to that for sure. And it's like, yeah, you get the, you even get a little bit of the variance, you know, of just like not knowing who you're going against, you know, and it's yeah. like, it's kind of almost that gambling, you know, scenario where it's like, you know, if you get, ga- if you gambled and won every single time, it would be boring. Yeah. But because you like losing is inherent to the addiction, addiction, you know? Yeah. If you don't lose, like you would just, you wouldn't keep playing. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. super weird. So. Yeah, it is interesting. Yeah, as soon as as soon as you don't have that like fear, then you lose the like emotional side of it. You yeah. lose like the adrenaline, the fight or flight, the nerves, the whole mm-hmm. experience goes away. Yeah, so it's almost like an adrenaline junkie experience, except with <laughs> yeah, without necessarily like physical danger. Yeah, I guess the physical danger is sitting in your chair for. Th- Five hours straight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> click, 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 click. Yeah. Or a card game or yeah. My poor something. posture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's danger to my neck. Carpal tunnel. My wrists. Yeah. So, who knew right. online gaming was so dangerous, dude? It is. It is dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well that's uh I think that was my quick quick dive into competition there. Okay. Cool, man. So. Competitiveness. Yeah. Yeah. I would also just like to say before we move on, please. I do think that there it would be a better world if everyone played a competitive sport. Not mm-hmm. only health reasons, because everybody would be more active and get outside and you'd socialize more. And I do think that would actually be good for society. Mm-hmm. But I also think it would motivate people more 
You know, it's like you're not at home, just like stuck watching TV or whatever. You're going to get out. You've got a goal. You know how to have like self-discipline. You're motivated for things. You're like working hard to achieve something. Controlling your anger. Control your anger, (laughs) you know, join the dark side. Um, No, I think it would, I I think it would actually be a, a healthy thing if like everyone in society, not necessarily competitive to like pro athlete level, Sure. But like the city league level, yeah. Or like you join some kind of league, the church league, the company mm-hmm. league, whatever it is, and you play a sport where you're gonna actually like put effort in and try to win. I think yeah. that would actually be good for like pretty much every human being. Hmm. You know, I'd agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's yeah, yeah. And again, like I'd be really curious to see you know if the sport makes the person competitive or, and that's the thing where it's like if it was more ingrained. I mean. Do you feel like our culture is pretty competitive? Like just American I think, culture? I think, uh, yeah, American culture, I think is very competitive. Yeah. So it's like already kind of like that. But then, then even within that, there's people that aren't very competitive still. So, yeah, I, I, and I mean, that's an interesting thing to think about too. I, I wonder if America is less competitive now than we used to be mm-hmm. maybe like 50 plus years ago. I could definitely see that. Cause I think we used <laughs> to have a lot more national pride we were competitive in terms of just like our country versus other country, the American spirit, we're the best, you know, yeah. but also competitive <laughs> in like our industry, competitive within our own sports. And yeah. I think now there's almost this like, you know, oh, <laughs> nobody's the best. We're all the same. I'm not really <laughs> for America. I'm not competitive about anything. Like I think some people are still competitive for like their city professional team or whatever, but I, I do think yeah. that we're not as competitive as maybe we have been historically as a country. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like the, the average population is moving away from competitiveness, but there'll always still be the extreme competitive people. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. There's actually an ad that I've been seeing online recently where it shows like four people sitting on a couch watching a football game and three of them are all wearing the same Jersey and one dude's just wearing a completely different Jersey. Mm -hmm. And I I cannot remember what they're selling. Maybe it's like fantasy football or something. I can't remember (laughs) what they're trying to sell. But the, the quote that comes up is like, like you might change, but your team never changes. Or it's like, (laughs) like you like never change your team or something like that. I can't remember. Weird. And so it's like this one dude just like standing alone for his team amongst the other people. <laughs> like I'll never change to conform to the crowd of the other team or whatever, you know? Yeah. And so it makes me think of that like defiant competitiveness. Like <laughs> I still believe in my team no matter what, you know, Even they're the worst and everyone else jump ship. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Interesting. It's the one. No. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so competitiveness, man. Yeah, dude. There it is. All right. All right, people. Go uh, find a sport, get angry about it. (laughs) (laughs) Show some bad sportsmanship. (laughs) Yeah, control your anger. (laughs) Fight with lightsabers. Be the best you can be. Take some lessons away. Yeah. Be kind to people. Smash a ball. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) Gently, (laughs) gently in your heart. Yeah. (laughs) Um. All right, Brandon. Yeah. Okay. Part two. Kung Fu. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you were talking about competitiveness because I feel like there's actually a lot of parallels here. But yeah, um, I've been on the kind of a weird kick lately where I've been like, like yeah, literally kick, <laughs> kick to the face, roundhouse <laughs> kick. Um, Bruce Lee. I've been on, uh, yeah, Bruce Lee. I've just been pulling out some like YouTube videos of Bruce Lee clips and Jackie Chan. Dude, and, you and your dad. Oh, yeah, yeah. He likes yeah. watching martial arts, too. Yeah, yeah you're pretty, probably watching it on the same night, to be honest. I, maybe. <laughs> That's probably where I got it from, you know, because my dad likes showing me Enter the Dragon and things yeah. like that. But um, <laughs> it's uh, it's just interesting uh, for so many different reasons, I think. I think Kung Fu and really just martial arts in general, but I'm going to fixate on Kung Fu because, I don't know, it sounds cool. Yeah. And I like Jack Black and Kung Fu Panda and things like that. But... Um, <laughs> Okay, that was not as far as I expected but, to go, but okay. But you know, I think I think kung fu is interesting because wait, how how are you relating Bruce Lee to Jack Black as well, an animated panda? Well, it's not <laughs> just the idea of kung fu in just, general. Just the idea of kung fu. Okay, okay. Just because kung fu panda was like specifically kung fu, you know. But there's 
there's a lot of I mean I think that Bruce Lee I think he created his own martial arts technique at a certain point and I think he came out of more like Win Wing Chung or something like that I, I it was so, yeah. the Ip Man thing from that movie and I think Jackie Chan was very similar to Bruce Lee I was actually watching a Jackie Chan clip today where mm-hmm. he was played I didn't know this but I guess he was like a kind of a background character in Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee and Bruce mm-hmm. Lee like smacked him in the head or something <laughs> like that yeah so that was kind of cool little, interesting little factoid huh but I think um, kung fu and martial arts in general are really interesting because you have such a mix of so many things. Like um, kung fu apparently was started, uh, as Wikipedia told me, from uh, a <laughs> guy from, done his like, research. from a guy from like India who actually came up to China, hmm. and he was I think it was like in like 200 BC or something, and he came up to China and then started teaching kung fu as sort of like a exercise slash spiritual practice to like a temple of like Buddhist monks in the mountains in China. Hmm. And then they kept that practice until like 500 AD, I think. Oh, and wow. And that was when it got popular within, uh, I'm going to try to pronounce this right, the uh-huh. the Sho, Shaolin or Shao, Shaolin Temple. Oh, Shaolin, yeah. Shaolin, which is now where it's become very popular. And they sort of carried it on from there and turned it more into like a fighting technique. And then the military started using it and they're like their training and recruiting. And they created like an ethics to it and kind of a morality and a lot of principles behind it. And so it went from here's sort of like an exercise form to like a whole sort of religion way of life. Mm-hmm. And you, you get that captured sometimes in movies where there's kind of this way especially of life. Kung Fu Panda. Especially Kung Fu Panda, right? <laughs> And I think that that's really interesting because you could look at so many other things in the world where it's like, okay, this is just like a form of fighting, you know, like boxing. Sure. You know, it's like, do you have like a religion associated <laughs> with boxing? Do you have like a, Some people do. like you got to go live in the temple in the mountains in yeah, order to, to be like a box. true boxer, you know? Yeah. But there's, there's just such a depth to Kung Fu, you mm-hmm. know? And I think that's really interesting that it, it's like that. Um, Cause a lot of it moved to Hong Kong, right? For like their, because I, if I remember correctly, I think a lot of the, like at least in media portrayal of like kung fu was all like in Hong Kong. If I understand I correctly, because there's like a huge Ooh. film in, industry there, um, and that's awesome. where like yeah. Jackie Chan I think got his start. Oh really? Okay. It's like yeah, it was like basically like Hong Kong cinema. They were doing hmm. a lot of like martial arts out of there and stuff okay. like that. Hmm. But like that, that area specifically, just because it was like. I think it's kind of like the Taiwan of like today a little mm-hmm. bit where it's like, you know, it's like weird was China zone and then the British came in. Right. And then it became like kind of separated. And then I don't know. I don't know where it's at right now. I'm not I sure. I think it's back in China. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's a great question. A I know question. there were like some massive riots and a lot of controversy, but I haven't followed it. So I wouldn't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they're still doing their own thing. Who knows? But Yeah. yeah. Dude, China has, like, a weird relationship with, like, little countries or, like, little offshoots. <laughs> I mean, it's a big country, you know? Yeah. Like, it's got a lot of moving parts and cultures and sub, you know, categories of people and all the, you know, it's, like, yeah. ethnicities is what I mean to say. You know, just so many interesting parts to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's got such an interesting history, too, of different nations that have kind of come in and conquered and... You yeah, know, different dynasties that have ruled over it, and yeah, it's is a fascinating country. I guess if you've been around for thousands of years; it's bound to happen. Yeah, so. I wish yeah. it was more open. That would you know it'd be easier to travel through as like mm. a tourist because that that would be a fascinating country to just wander around through. You know, totally. But I probably wouldn't make it past their social credit score system. Or whatever. <laughs> you don't know enough kung fu. They would be like. <laughs> That guy didn't smile enough. <laughs> He's a menace to society. Let's take money out of his <laughs> bank account. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So what's uh? Is there like a central tenet of kung fu that appeals to you? Yeah. So one of yeah. discipline. Or? Yes, it is discipline. That's a very very big <laughs> part of it. Um, and you know some of it is well. Let me let me go back here. Mm-hmm. So I guess that the words kung fu actually means to like work hard on something. And sometimes people say it as like human accomplishment or skilled work that's done over time or like the practice of skilled work. Mm. So apparently you could actually use the terminology Kung Fu in relationship to a lot of different skills. Hmm. It doesn't have to be like a martial arts skill, which is I think also why Kung Fu is so broad. Like there's a lot of aspects of life that are kind of encompassed within that terminology. Like a 
Kung Fu chef. Kung Fu chef, you know, yeah. <laughs> I don't use knives to chop the vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, discipline is a really big one, and it's basically saying that, like, through discipline, you'll achieve, like, peace of, of mind and, like, peace in your life. Pretty good quote. Yeah. Through discipline, you'll achieve peace. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's this idea that when you get into the routine of things and when you can master (laughs) over your body, you can like master over killing my soul right now. (laughs) (laughs) And you can, and you can like have mastery over like your indulgences, you know, that you want in life. Then that's when you'll be able to essentially let go straight out of Star Wars, right? Like let go of your attachments. And then that's when you'll be happy because you're content with just like what your present moment and what you currently are as a human. Right, and I mean a lot of this comes out of like Buddhism, so it's it's very similar to that, right? Mm-hmm. And Star Wars, <laughs> so <laughs> which came a long time ago. Yeah, I don't know which one. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a galaxy, you know, far yeah. far away, a long time ago. Right? Yeah, it was first. So obviously, Star Wars is our genesis of humanity. Um, <laughs> no, so you know that discipline is a really big part of it. Another big part of it is your attention, and that's the meditation, the mindfulness. The idea that if you can control what your mind and your emotions pay attention to, then you can basically control how your soul is moving and like direct your soul, you know? And then that also brings like focus within life and enlightenment. And when you have sort of that inner emotional peace of mind, that's when you're like your most powerful self, you know? And so when if you can focus on the meditation, if you can focus on the discipline, the more you do sort of that internal work, the better kung fu like fighter you will be Mm -hmm. right and it's like the chi is flowing through you you'll have like the true sort of spiritual energy and that's where your fighting style like really comes from Mm. and i think that that's just and you know i was kind of talking about that earlier with the competition like if you can be focused in your mind then you can probably play a better sport but it's just i think it's interesting because it's almost a exercise form that says if you want to be a good athletic competitor you need to have like good mental health Mm. and we're going to do this like good (laughs) spirituality, mental health practices. And that's, what's going to create this like high level of, of like athleticism. Interesting. You know? Yeah. I was about to ask, you know, like where do you think that that focus comes from? You know, it's like, is it something that's like cultivated or is it? So, I mean, it sounds like it is if it's through meditation. Yeah. I think it's through or whatever, through sitting on your legs in a temple (laughs) in the Himalayas for like 10,000 hours. What if you get bored? There's no boredom. <laughs> boredom is something of, of the world. <laughs> it's, it's in your mind. It's an attachment of, of the flesh. <laughs> Let it die. <laughs> Let your na- legs go numb. The true dragon warrior is never bored. <laughs> uh, they thrive on the dew of the universe. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, fair enough. I don't. I'm not. A, <laughs> I'm not the true dragon warrior. I can oh, tell you that yeah. much. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Because like I just like I feel like I would try to do that now. Just be like, why am I doing this? You know, it's like I mean, do you feel like anyone could do that, or do you think that like those people feel a special calling? Um, that's a good question. Gosh, could anybody just go like live in the temple, and? be like a kung fu master i don't think anybody could do that i mean in multiple ways i should say like one i do think anybody could do that if they had started doing it from a young age and they didn't have like a physical disability well maybe i don't know maybe they take you in if you have physical disabilities i don't know how that works Hmm. but i don't think people could do it as they get older you know they're too they're too old to be trained as a Jedi. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm just I'm not, I'm imagining somebody who's like way older. I think it would be really difficult for them. I think it's possible. So you they have, could you're overcome. saying you have to brainwash someone into it. You got to brainwash people when they're young. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what how, I'm hearing. That's how the 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 monks do it. Um, <laughs> well, it's just it's just like sure. the the barrier of difficulty is going to be lower, right? Um, you got the physical yeah. aptitude. You've trained people in a, the mental practices to be able to have the capacity to do that. that like type being of Amish, being so, Amish, right? It's like not using technology. It's like if yeah. you have to like go as like a thirty year old who's like had technology all their life to being Amish, it's probably really difficult. Yeah, like if, if I grew up Amish, it's not quite as hard. I could not be Amish right now. That would be very very difficult. Yeah, It'd be like I haven't watched a YouTube video in twenty four <laughs> hours. 
I need to, I need to watch cats. Yeah. I'm starting uh, to get the itch. Scratch my eyes. Ah. <laughs> there's no screens. What will I do without the blue light? Yeah. Isn't that where like there's a like Calvin and Hobbes where he, like it's his TV taken away and he like he like makes like a TV frame and like carries it around <laughs> like in his I life. Believe it. Like oh throughout the gosh. day. <laughs> oh like, man. Just to, like, I just remembered Calvin Hobbes. He would always sleep in for school, but then on Saturdays, he'd wake up at 6 a.m. <laughs> and Hobbs was like, why are we waking up so early? And he's like, because it's Saturday. And he's like, yeah, so we can sleep in. He's like, yeah, so there's so much to do. we got to start watching Saturday morning cartoons. Come on, get out of bed. It's like as soon as it's something he wants to do, it's like easy to be productive. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's easy to like work hard for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's where I see like the kind of, you know, the Shaolin or monk lifestyle or whatever. It's like. You know, I think those people kind of have a special calling to like, you know, put, because if you don't have that, it's like what happens when the first hard thing comes your way, right? Of like you're sitting and you have a leg cramp, you know, it's yeah. like, this isn't worth it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like you have to get, be getting something out of it, you know, or mm -hmm. some sort of like, feel like that's your purpose or some satisfaction from it, I would guess. Yeah. Or else you're just like, what's the point, you know? Yeah. I it's totally like, agree. It's like people trying to play like competitive sports again. It's like, if you don't have that either pain or pleasure from like doing it it's like it's just blah and you're like mm. why do i care you know mm. why am i hitting this ball over the net you know it makes yeah. no sense so interesting yeah would you ever become a shaolin monk i don't think i would yeah but i wouldn't mind visiting a temple someday mm. just going checking it out yeah maybe jump around with some dudes let's let them hit do you some, with bamboo sticks yeah hit me with a bamboo <laughs> stick you know do some poses kick my legs around <laughs> Dress up in a cool outfit, you know. <laughs> Full cultural immersion, dude. That's right. Uh, Eat some rice. <laughs> <laughs> wow, uh, <laughs> what a bold, bold guy. <laughs> Maybe some sake if they got that around. <laughs> uh, wow. You're practically Chinese. <laughs> but if they uh, want me to shave my head, I'm gonna be like, nah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the fair weather monk, dude. Uh, oh gosh. <laughs> uh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, but my question that I was gonna ask you: Do you yeah. think you would ever, in your life, learn a fighting style of martial arts? Is that ever something that would come up on your like agenda, your bucket list? Yeah. 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 If I had like, I don't know, fifty thousand extra hours in my life, I would. Yeah. But there's a lot of things I would do if I had 58,000 extra hours. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think so. Hmm. It's like, to me, it's it's kind of falls in that exercise category, competitiveness mm -hmm. category, you mm -hmm. know. And it's kind of interesting because, I mean, I, I'm guessing they do competitions in Kung Fu, right? I'm sure they do, yeah. Yeah. So it's probably, well, and like you said, it's kind of all encompassing, encompassing. So I imagine they probably have, like, different people that do it for different reasons. Like... Some people are probably competitive with it. Some people are probably like, it's just like a form of exercise. For other people, it's probably more spiritual, or right? Yeah. And it's just so. like Karate Kid. <laughs> the one dude wanted to do it just to beat somebody down. Karate Kid. Well, he also kind of did it just to beat somebody down. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the day, it's he the fighting like, style, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the Karate Kid was the true bully. <laughs> I'm There's a lot of movies sure. like that where it's yeah. like if you just kind of like twist the narrative a little bit, it's like all of a sudden the protagonist is kind of like the jerk. Yeah, he's like, kind of a jerk sometimes. <laughs> he was like a little bit too gung ho to just like get into the fighting, you know, for like not really the best reasons. It's like, what options do I have? And they're like, well, you can, you know, just uh, not you can avoid him or you can beat him down. He's like, I'll beat him down. <laughs> he's like, ah, oh, okay, <laughs> dang, I mean, yeah, yeah, interesting, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I've uh, actually one of my favorite movies is Fist of Legend. Oh, with Jet Li. Oh, I don't know if I've seen that actually. Yeah, Jet Li. I forgot about Jet Li. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I oh. imagine he came up in that probably that same era. I, he's probably inspired by Bruce Lee. I'd imagine. Mm. And yeah, so. I think Bruce Lee. Okay, what I was reading was that apparently back in like the 1960s, we used to call all forms of martial arts from Asia just Chinese boxing. We didn't really know what to call it because boxing was the main fighting style. So everything was boxing, like all hmm. physical conflict was like boxing or wrestling. Like Interesting. I don't think we had other names. Yeah. You know? We didn't do like You're either hitting people or grabbing them. <laughs> yeah. 
And so I think they just looked at Kung Fu or Taekwondo or other forms of martial arts and they were just like, ah, Chinese boxing, whatever that is. Hmm. But it wasn't until Bruce Lee came onto the scene in the 60s and started making movies that he was like, this is Kung Fu. This is another thing. Let's make some movies about it. Interesting. And then it became like a national phenomenon that people loved the films. They loved Bruce Lee. Mm. I think like Dojo started opening up where people wanted to learn it, you know? Mm. And then you had, yeah, more, you know, modern actors, Jackie Chan, Jet Li, other people who kind of followed in that that path. A Interesting. Bit, you know? I'd be kind of like wild to be the first person to kind of like open up a whole culture to this new way of like thinking and, yeah. and like, you know, fighting even. Yeah. That's kind of wild. I mean, that's the power of being a very original actor, you know? Like, yeah. if you can be in a, a, if you can come from, and it's not even just original, it's just that you came from something different than the, the norms of the well, culture. Well, he was kind of, like, superhuman, too. He was just, he like... He was pretty superhuman. Yeah, he was pretty, like, just inspiring on what he could do just with his body. He played so. ping pong with nunchucks, <laughs> you know? I mean, that's just insane. Yeah. Yeah, he did a lot of wild things with his physicality. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I don't know, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like there's going to be, you know, this whole like vegetarian weightlifting movement or whatever vegan weightlifting mm -hmm. movement. Mm -hmm. It'll be like, there might be someone like that who just like, you know, for whatever reason is just freakishly strong or whatever. Right. And then like makes like vegan weightlifting look super cool. Yeah. And then like a bunch of people are going to try it. I mean, probably people already have, I guess. Yeah. I think that's already been a thing, but yeah. Yeah, so you just need like that poster child for your movement to like really get something started. It's true. <laughs> yeah, and he was a good poster child for sure. Yeah. Well, plus he was just like well spoken and you know mm -hmm. like pretty, pretty genuine person. It seemed like. Yeah. Although I always, I always think with those people, it's like the Steve Jobs people hmm. where they're like, you know, super. On the outside, it's like, oh man, he looks like a really cool guy. And it's like, then you like look into his personal life and you're like, well, I wouldn't really want to know him or be in a relationship with him or like be his friend or I like. I want to be friends with that guy, <laughs> but I like his movies. Yeah, exactly. I like an iPhone. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. And it's like, you're like, would I want a friend like that? Probably not. You know, yeah. it's like probably steal my idea and then like yeah. go make a million dollars off it or something. You know, I don't know. Yeah. yeah I'm I sure they had good I, friends. But... I don't know what, yeah, Bruce yeah. Lee was like. Or... Yeah. But those oh. people always just like the super intense people that are like like super driven. They have their goal and they're just gonna like go after it, you know. And yeah. it's like the people in their life are kind of just like tools to get there, you know, yeah. to some extent. Yeah, like it's true. I don't know. You just reminded me of how, um, <laughs> not because Bruce Lee was using him as a tool or anything. <laughs> not not that I know of, but I was gonna say Chuck Norris oh. <laughs> because he was also his debut film was with Bruce Lee. Yeah, yeah. Because I think that they used to practice in like a dojo together. <laughs> And then he was like, "Hey, you want to be like my, the the like yeah. bad guy, guy that I fight in this like movie scene?" He's like, "Okay, <laughs> cool." And then I think that's how Chuck Norris got his start. You yeah, know? which that's a whole nother funny thing because Chuck Norris basically brought martial arts to like white people <laughs> <laughs> in Texas or whatever. So it's like that's a whole weird. Like, yeah, how on earth did that become a thing? <laughs> right. You know? Well, and then you get all like the weird like Patrick Swayze fight. Wait, did he wasn't the guy that was fighting? Patrick Swayze? No, there was. What was it? Roadhouse or something? Or like, uh, I don't know. I feel like there was like a slew of movies in the 80s that were all just like guys without shirts, like doing kick and butt. And yeah. Stuff. yeah. Uh, I can't remember. I'd have to look it up. There were some other <laughs> like big action stars yeah. who were like white like, action guys. Like who John were getting... Claude Van Damme or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, He's European. And he was doing like kickboxing. Dolph Lundgren. I don't know. I think. <laughs> Yeah, maybe yeah. it's all the Europeans. I don't know. That was their thing. I don't know. No. I didn't watch enough of that to know. But no. Yeah, anyway. So Kung Fu, I think it's really yeah. interesting. So how does Kung Fu Panda inspire you? Kung Fu Panda, <laughs> uh, it shows me that I can still eat whatever I want <laughs> and be 100% athletic. <laughs> no big deal. Be the best version of yourself after eating well, too I much think, ramen. I think Kung Fu Panda, because like in a lot of movies, there's a lot of focus on like the technique and like the fight of it and i think in kung fu kung fu panda it focused more on the internal which mm -hmm. i liked it was like hey you just you're the you're a panda and you think that you're like physical you know obesity basically is going to stop you from fighting people mm -hmm. and that you've got some obstacle and they use like a physical example of an obstacle 
but really that wasn't the true obstacle. It was like your real obstacle is that you just don't believe in yourself. And like if you had, you know, that peace of mind again, then you could actually become like the greatest dragon warrior ever. And you just have to overcome the like mental, emotional challenges first. And then the physical is like a secondary thing. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that was something I really liked about that. Now I, you know, if somebody (laughs) had obesity, I don't know if they could, you know, be the dragon warrior. That is, that is pretty big challenge, (laughs) but I would agree with the idea that you first have to overcome the mental, emotional challenge, Mm -hmm. and then you can work on the physical challenge second. Mm -hmm. And then that hopefully will come along and you'll increase your skills, you know, physically and in, in just like the mental game of it. That is why I've been actually interested in counseling because it's like, it is to me, I always, yeah, I see like those kind of burdens people have or like whatever obstacles and it is yeah it does like start a lot of times mentally yeah like i would say probably even spiritually first and foremost Mm -hmm. but um i don't think people are ready to take that step a lot of times to like address the spiritual before they address the mental but yeah um i think if you are gonna work to fix things kind of working backwards with whatever step you can handle first it's like you might only be able to handle the physical at first Mm -hmm. And then if you can, if that's all you can, if you can't even touch the mental stuff, just start working on the physical and it might even get you to a state where you can then work on the mental, you know? Yeah. And then once you can start working on the mental, then work on that, you know? And then it's like, then you can hopefully clear up some of the fog in your mental life to even yeah. like acknowledge the spiritual side of things. Yeah. And then you can start to work on that, I think. Yeah. So. And I mean, that's the idea behind cognitive behavioral therapy, that it's like change your behaviors first and you'll change your emotions and your mental uh, focus in life through changing behaviors. Yeah. Don't just sit down and be like peace of mind, make it, <laughs> make my mind at peace. Like that's not going to work. Yeah. Do something that gives you peace of mind. Go for a walk in the woods, right? That's a behavior mm-hmm. and through doing that. Your mind will become more peaceful, right? Things like yeah. that. So how does that work within like force it? Like, cause you're talking about like mental discipline and stuff like that. So is it like, and that was good. One of my questions was kind of be like, how do you, is it just complete willpower or is it like through the practices you get willpower to like, you know, then do more practices to then get more willpower? Or is yeah. It like- I mean, it's, it's a community of people. Well, a couple things. One, it's a community of people who are um, practicing everything together. So it's like, go live in the, the temple or even just like your dojo where you're like, you know, every Thursday night I go to the, you know, martial arts group in town or whatever, but you have a community of people where you all do the practices together, you know? And sounds I think like religion. It sounds like religion, right? <laughs> I mean, it, it is, honestly, a lot of these yeah. martial arts, like it is a religion, it's a way of life. Mm-hmm. And I think that, that that instills the behavior, the practice, the discipline in you. And over time, doing that for years, that's where it's gonna change uh, the, the mindset for a person. Yeah. Now, I think also you have like a hierarchy of positions because there's a lot of, uh, you know, the belts and the masters and the apprentice people and, or the, I should say uh, not masters, it's Shifu, right? The, the Shifus <laughs> are the, that's, I think that's the word for master, I believe. Probably, yeah. Um, I mean, that's the name of Kung Fu Panda's master, <laughs> Master Shifu, which I think actually just means master, master. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, you, you've got the hierarchy of people. So it's like, obviously, if you want to get more involved, you know, there, there's almost like an entry level. And then if you're like, okay, I want to get more serious, you can kind of like level up mm-hmm. in the, the Kung Fu world, you know? So here's the question. So if you think everyone should be competitive to some extent or participate in competitive sports, mm-hmm. do you think everyone should participate in these rituals or like some sort of ritual or something to like increase discipline and increase... You know, that kind of thing. I mean, at the bare minimum, yeah, I think everybody should be involved in a physical discipline. So a physical discipline, if that was a um, just go to the gym and exercise, if that was play a competitive sport, if that was like you've got a... I'm thinking more like specifically like the ritual and uh, communal part of it. Well, I, I understand communal. When you say ritual, what does that mean? Well, you just said you like, because you're disciplined, so you're like doing it consistently, basically, which yeah. I would see as ritual or like certain practices that you like participate in, like on a regular basis. Yeah. 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 Having, right. So having like a regular, yeah, physical practice of some kind, uh, I think would be healthy for everybody. I think that would be great, you know? And one of the ways that I was going to say, I think this would apply really well in today's society is when I think about, 
um, uh, motivation, right? I was talking about that with competitive sports earlier. Um, I, I see how we have a massive shortage in our workforce today where a lot of people, you know, young people, not thinking of anyone specifically, um, <laughs> but young people are not motivated to go and like try to get a job or start a career or do things. And especially after COVID where there was a lot of like free money that was going out, you know, not, I think people just aren't as ambitious. They don't always know what they want to do. They don't even necessarily want to like just try something and then see, you know, trial and error, see if it works or doesn't work. And so I think that if there, if there was something that was like, here's a, here's a discipline or a practice of working hard on something, competitive sport, doing something uh, like Kung Fu, I think that that would encourage people to be more proactive in their life. And I think that that, uh, you know, a community, if you were involved in a community, it was like, we are going to try to create skilled work and be like focusing on this as a way of life. I think that that could really change how people get motivated to get, you know, more into uh, hobbies or jobs or career potentials and just be more productive in life in general, you know? And I think that would be great for society. I think that would help a lot of people. Yeah. So you're going to start a dojo in Coeur d'Alene? Maybe I should, man. <laughs> yeah. I definitely would be interested in starting martial arts. I think m my current obstacle would probably just be financial, you know? I mean, I think I could make the time for it, mm -hmm. but I don't know if I could put it in my budget right now, you know, because I, I don't know exactly how much they cost, but I've always heard <laughs> some pretty high prices. Yeah. So... I've always kind of looked the at the price of said, enlightenment isn't cheap. <laughs> yeah. I've always kind of looked at that and just looked at like a normal gym membership and thought uh, normal gym is like one, you know, fourth the price of the <laughs> martial arts thing here. So I don't know if I can afford that. Yeah. It's after, like one of the most expensive. After Joe things. Rogan made jujitsu popular. Dang it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Put that back on the map. Yeah. Uh, so funny. Yeah. Interesting. All right. There well, you have it. There you have it. <laughs> Uh, Kung Fu and competition. Yeah. When you put it together, you get Karate Kid. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, thanks for uh, joining us for uh, episode one of season two. That's right. Season two. We'll be back for uh, many more That's after right. this. Stay tuned, folks. Thanks for watching. All right. Have a great day.